Hi, I'm Shok Kumar. In this module, I'm going to explain everything about risk fire. I will address all your questions: why, what, and how. Why do we need a risk fire as an open ISA? What is risk fire? How did we adopt risk fire so far? The risk fire adoption. Also, in this module, let's explore the risk fire ISA. Risk fire ISA defines various things like unprivileged architecture. and privileged architecture as part of unprivileged architecture it defines various things like registers overall there are 32 general purpose registers there is a special register called program counter it also defines base isa there are 40 instructions and it also defines various standard extensions and user can also add their own extensions As part of privileged architecture, Risk Five defines various layers like Machine ISA, Supervisor ISA, and the Hypervisor extension. Also, Risk Five provides various interfaces like ABI (Application Binary Interface) for the application to interface with AEE (Application Execution Environment) and SBI (Supervisor Binary Interface) for the operating system to interface with the SEE. supervisor execution environment and hbi hypervisor binary interface for the hypervisor to interface with hee hypervisor execution environment so let's explore the risk five isc risk five originated as a small project at uc berkeley in 2010 risk five means fifth major isc risk means reduced instruction set computer and phi means fifth major isa instruction set architecture risk phi is a license free open isa we can download this specification from the website riskphi.org and you can implement your processor as you prefer you can also contribute your design back to the community as an open source ip using risk phi you can realize all kinds of computing systems like from microcontrollers to supercomputers risk phi is not a company risk phi is not a cpu implementation it's an isa instruction set architecture risk phi international is a non-profit organization risk phi international maintains the risk phi instruction set architecture all the specifications also it manages the stakeholder community there are more than 3900 risk phi members across various countries you can download the specifications from the website riskphi.org there are various kinds of specifications specifications that define unprivileged architecture and privileged architecture and there are other specifications to deal with various things like off chip debugging or interfacing with interrupts so there are specifications for debug architecture there are specifications to implement platform level interrupt controller primarily to interface with various kinds of external interrupts you can visit the website riskphi.org and download all the specifications why do we need risk phi as an open isc oems original equipment manufacturers like apple design various kinds of complex socs socs like a series chips and m series chips these socs use various kinds of processors they need cpus could be risk and sys apple uses risk processor even for their desktops now we are exploring how to use a risk for everything apple uses risk reduced instruction set computer even for their desktop now we are exploring how to use a risk for everything from smartphone to desktop to cloud servers so we need cpus risk cpus gpus graphics processors ml accelerators application processors image processors dsps radio dsps and audio dsps digital signal processors that could be various security and neural engines 
and we need processors for the power management. So like this, there could be various kinds of processors. All these processors could be based on general purpose and specialized IACs. We have no problem with general purpose IACs, but when it comes to using specialized IACs, we need to understand how to deal with various kinds of challenges associated with these specialized IACs. Also, each IAC comes along with unique software stack. So let's look at the challenges we face when it comes to using specialized processors. Specialized processors depend on special purpose IACs. So in this case, we need to work with multiple IP vendors. Different IP vendors may have different IP licensing schemes and the engineers will not have the freedom to customize the IACs. All specialized IACs will not survive for long. Also, the software or application development and updates involving multiple IACs and tool chains would be very, very challenging. That's where risk v offers an open IAC like this. You can think of using risk v open IAC to implement all kinds of processors. That's how risk v IAC is going to emerge. It's going to emerge as an industry standard IAC for all kinds of processors. Whether you want to implement CPUs or GPUs or DSPs or neural engines or accelerators, you can think of using risk v IAC for everything. As I mentioned, there are various general purpose and special purpose IACs. So it's very obvious that general purpose IACs survive for decades. IBM processor for more than 50 years, Intel's x86 for more than 40 years, ARM for more than 30 years, and risk v is continuing for more than 10 years. But when it comes to special purpose IACs, we need to really understand they don't survive for decades. Also, let's compare risk v IAC with the x86 and ARM, you can understand the advantages of risk v IAC. Are there chips available implemented using general purpose IACs? For x86, yes, there are some vendors. For ARM, there are many vendors. And risk v similar to ARM, there are many vendors in the ecosystem. x86, whether it offers architecture license? No. ARM, yes, but very expensive. Risk for it's open IAC. You can customize the IAC as you prefer. You can think of adding your own instructions. Are there commercial IPs available in the ecosystem? For x86, no. For ARM, yes, you get the IP only from ARM. For risk for there are many vendors. You can buy the processor IPs from various vendors. Can you think of adding your own instructions for x86? No. For ARM, no. For risk v yes. Are there any open source IPs? You don't want to pay for it. You just want to use open source IPs. For x86, no. For ARM, no. For risk v yes, there are many IPs available. You can visit the risk v website, risk v.org, and you can find out. risk v adoption. risk v ecosystem is growing fast. You can think of simulating a risk v IAC. There are various simulators available. There are various emulators available. And there are various boards available for the software development. Operating systems like Linux and Android support risk v risk v will be in more than 16 billion SOCs by 2030. These are all some of the new processors implemented by companies like Sci-Fi. These are all some of the new applications implemented by companies like Qualcomm. So risk v is going to emerge as an industry standard IAC for all computing devices. CPUs, GPUs, DSP, accelerators, neural engines, for all kinds of processors, risk v is going to become an industry standard IAC, instruction set architecture. So there will be more demand for RV128, risk v 128 IAC in the future. There will be many new extensions and there will be many new specialized processors using risk v Open IAC. They are not going to use any proprietary IACs in the future. Thank you.